Hello, my most amazing artist. How are you today? I hope you are well. I hope you're doing well with all your schoolwork and I'm not hunker down at home. I hope you are well, staying safe, washing your hands and maintaining good social distancing, all that jazz. Just, I hope you are doing well. And that all this up here is okay too. And that we're not too sad or upset because we should have joy. We should all be have hope and that this will not last forever, okay? I say that from the bottom of my heart and I love you guys and I hope that I get to see you soon, okay? But then we're going to play a little bit, okay? We are going to be working a little bit in my oil painting. I'm gonna show you how I mix my colors, how I, you know, love to work with oil paints and get my colors ready for my oil painting. And some of you guys might notice this painting from Glade Hill. I actually worked on this painting a lot at Glade Hill and a lot of the students got to see it there. So some of you guys may recognize it. We're just gonna keep it simple. I may bring my, you know, phone around and I'll let you see it, what I'm doing, but I just wanna show you some ticks, some ticks. I'm gonna show you some ticks today. <laughs> I'm going to show you some tricks, techniques, and things, fun things that I like to do when I'm wall painting. I just thought that would be fun for you to see. So this is kind of, kind of like a little Bob Rossi kind of video, sort of, maybe kind of, I don't know, maybe, but it's just for fun. I just thought I might show you my process. And then after we get our oil painting segment done, I thought I might show you my finished piece for the drawing challenge which is a made up animal. And then I'll show you my next prompt that I'm gonna be doing. And speaking of the drawing challenge, I have been getting a lot of entries for the drawing challenge. Keep that up. And then I also wanna to say to parents, parents, FYI, parents, calling all parents. This is for you, parents. Parents, are you there? Are you there? Okay. <laughs> hey guys, I just wanna let you know, this is not something that they have to do. This is not part of their, you know, um, class packs or anything where they have to get this done or to finish the grade or finish the class and get a grade. And it's like, no, all, all of us itinerants like music, art, gym, all that stuff. It's not, it's, I mean, we can't require you all to do that. We just want to offer some art to you, some music to you, some ways to stay active, all that stuff. Like we, we just, we're just here to, you know, keep art alive and those things in the house and, and not to forget about them. It's just extra. If you want to do it, great. If you don't, that's fine. Okay. So that's all for you parents. Now kids, come on back. Come on back. Bring it on. Bring it on back. Bring it on back. <laughs> Because now I want to show you how I do some of my mixing, my color mixing. So you can see this is a glass plate and it is perfect. It's really big and it's perfect for me to do some mixing. But I've already here this little black spot right here. The black spot, the black spot. Oh no. <laughs> if you get that reference, comment below and tell me. <laughs> but this is a purple actually. And I'm trying to get a very, very grayish kind of purple. I don't want like a purple, like, like deep, deep, vibrant purple. I'm looking for a grayish purple. So I'm using what is called a, I love that sound. I don't know why I just did. But I'm using what's called a palette knife. You see here, I'm putting that paint right there. I'll cover up my face. There we go. You can see a little bit of it. Yeah. See all that paint on there? Yummy, yummy, in my tummy. <laughs> and I'm using what's called a palette knife and I'm scooping all that up, getting it in a little section. Remember what I said when we mix paint is that we wanna treat it like a brush. Like this is my, well, I meant not a brush, treat it like a broom. And then mix all of your, or push all of your paint in a little pile like you would the dirt. And push all the dirt in the center, just like a dees and then scrape it off, it's got a little pile, and it's perfect. And then I wipe off some of the excess on my paper towel, I mean on my, my towel here, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Yep, you see me doing that, good. And that's a little bit more white than I wanted. I just want a peck. Let's see what we get. 
see this is what's fun to me mixing all these colors is because you get to see like all this magic happening on the plate on the tray here and it gets to be pretty cool now this is turning into I think you can kind of see this is turning into still a very vibrant purple so what I'm thinking I might do is add a little bit of Payne's gray and that's a certain kind of gray I'm going to grab one of these boogers this one's a little bit more pointy. that one's a little bit more round and this is a Payne's gray it's really really nice and I'm gonna put that in the purple to make it uh, yeah I need to use this one more because it scoops it up better pushes it all in the center And it's still looking too vibrant, too, too purpley. You know, I just want to dull it down. So I'm going to get more of this Payne's Gray. I'm going to plug it in there. And then when I add white to it, you can kind of see the color that I'm looking for. It just feels so cool. It's like mixing mud, colored mud. Too fun. Because with oil paints, this stuff is thick. And it is so, so yummy, so luscious and creamy and beautiful. I used oil paint a lot when I was in college. That was what I did a lot of my painting work with. I didn't use like acrylics. Acrylics are kind of what we use in class. They're a little bit more watered down. There's some acrylics that are thick and there's some that are really creamy. You guys got the creamy stuff. But this stuff is like the top of the thickest paint, oil paint. And I love it because you can make it look really shiny and creamy and all that texture because Van Gogh used um, oil paint. That's what made his surfaces of his paint so thick and you can almost pick up the paint off the canvas. It's so thick. You can see the application of paint and it's so cool. He was pretty awesome for doing something like that. Nobody did that. Everybody had to be super clean and smooth. And he was like, uh, no, I ain't gonna do that. I'm going to be making all kinds of textures on my, on my canvas. And he did. And that's why we all love him for it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of gray I want, child. Come here. Come here, you sorry sack of wet cheese. Come here. Ooh. Look, this is what I wanted. Yay! So I got like that perfect purple. Because now what I want to do is I want to add this to the bark of my tree. So not all trees are brown. I usually like to paint my trees purple. And I start off with a dark color and then I work my, my way up to the lightest color. So, if you look at my tree over here, I didn't really do it right. It's very, very light. And I needed to give it a little bit more, mm, a little bit more darkness in some areas. So, what I'm actually going to use is I'm not going to use a brush. I'm actually going to clean off my palette. I mean, my, my, yeah, my palette knife, sorry clean off my palette knife and clean it off here and I'm going to use a sponge and I'm going to use that to paint the tree. Now you can normally use a paintbrush but I found a new technique that makes it look really cool when you use the brush I mean when you use the sponge so let me show you what that looks like okay all right I'm right here, <laughs> but I've got my sponge in hand, and now I'm going to grab some of the purple, and I'm actually going to mix, I need to use, this is what you call galkid medium. i pour just a little bit in here, and what this does is it allows the paint to, to thin down a little bit, but it, it's like honey, it's like the consistency of honey, and it, dry, it makes the paint dry faster as well. And I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to grab a little bit of the oil paint, just dab it on there. 
and I'm going to darken it up in places and add some texture. I'm d I need to put it more where there are dark areas. Oh, and this is going to make such interesting detail. And then you see you can make big marks here. That's a technique. Big splotches. I'm just going to cover the whole dang tree. I'm just going to do it. Huh. That looks cool. Now, it looks kind of weird right now, but see what's going to happen is that when you let this dry, I'm going to add a lot more lines on top of it lines upon lines and even spectacles like little spots where a bark might have like lichen or moss or something all over it and it's gonna make it look really cool very cool so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that to the tree up here some back here and some back in here some in this area definitely some down in here the sponge technique and I'm gonna see how that works now off in the distance I wouldn't do that because Things that are up close, you see a lot more detail. And things that are far away, it's almost like it's misty and foggy. And all the details kind of disappear as you go back. So it would just be up here. Maybe a little bit here because that's what is in the middle ground. Second grade and third graders, I know you guys remember the middle ground. And the foreground is down here. And the background is back here. So the background is your sky. The middle ground is like the river and the mountains and the field and the trees back here. And then the foreground would be the road, the grass, and the girl and the tree. So yeah, you guys should remember that. I remember us talking about that. So you can see those in action in a painting. Okay. So those are my next steps. And I'll show that to you later. But I thought I might just show you one quick technique, which is the sponge, and then how I mix my colors. And I love mixing my colors. It's so much fun. So now what I thought I might do is I'll show you my finished piece of the made-up animal, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the drawing challenge. Okay? So let's go check it out. Okay, so I've got my sketchbook here, and I am ready to show you my version of the drawing prompt for made up animal. I've seen so many cool made up animals and so many different drawing entries that have been going on here lately. They're so cool looking. I'm so proud of you guys that you're still sketching and drawing and using your imagination and being creative. I'm so proud of you. Very good job. But for now, let me show you what I've done and then we'll talk about or well, I'll show you what I have ideas for in our next drawing challenge, okay? But for now, look at my animal. Isn't that cool? I'm just so tickled with him. I cannot believe how cool he turned out. He looks like a mess, I know. He's a little funky looking. <laughs> but that's what's fun, is that you can use your imagination. So that is my entry for made up animal. And I think I'm going to put his name on here now because I've been debating about his name and what we're going to call him. Okay. I'm going to name him. He is the the bark dog. <laughs> and his name is Twigs. <laughs> I love it. I was close to calling him Mossy, but I don't like it. I think Twigs is cool. Yep. Twigs. Twigs the Bark Dog. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, that was my first entry. Nextly, I think I may do several at one time because, boy, do I need to catch up. I'm kind of falling behind. A lot of y'all have already got d 10 done, but I've already done one. Look how slow I am. i got to pick back up. So the next one that I'm going to do is queen or king. And, oh, I got to go get my other sketchbook. I'll be right back. Remember this, my fourth and fifth graders? Some of you second and third graders. Yeah, this will be new to you. But we started a project called uh, Character Cards. And mine was a queen. And so I'm going to pick back up 
on this project and I'm going to finish her this week and I'm also going to do several more let's see let me pick that out really quick I think I might do hmm I think I'm going to do I think I found them I'll mark them off here real quick I've done the made-up animal I think I'm gonna do the bubble person a garden and yourself and I think I might also do since some of you guys ah this is what I'll do some of you guys have asked me to do a horse to draw a horse or unicorn or whatever maybe I might make a unicorn of many colors Ooh, I don't know but I think I'm gonna do that I think I'm gonna do yourself bubble person garden and a horse of many colors I'm on it that's going to be my next couple challenges. I'm going to pick up those and do those real quick, okay? And then as far as the challenges, I mean, challenges. As far as the prizes are concerned, remember we talked about the last video was going to be some of my stickers. I've got four of them, but here's two of them. Let me pull this stuff out of the way. Bye, twigs. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to let you guys have a pack of my stickers some of my favorite stickers that I have and then I had to talk to my mom about this because I was just so confused on what to do I've been rattling my brain on prizes so we came up with the perfect idea and it was I'm gonna have a list of fun prizes that I'll keep off close to me I won't tell anyone yet but when I have my winners, I'm going to go, okay, guys, let's get together. I have a list of, of cool prizes here. Which ones do you want? And you'll be able to pick when you are the winner, okay? So it's going to be a secret until the last minute, okay? So here's the first set of prizes, just a pack of stickers, some of my favorites. And then I'll tell you the prizes once you win. i got to collect them. I got to get that list all ready to go for you and you got to get those challenges done and then next week you're gonna see me finish the next prompt which is king or queen I think I may do finish my queen here and then I'm gonna flip her over and make it look like a playing card okay so that's gonna be my next one and then I'm gonna do myself or yourself yourself myself myself yourself I'll figure it out bubble person a garden and a horse of many colors. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. So guys, keep up with your drawing challenge. Pick 10, make the artwork any way that you want. Remember, it doesn't have to be done fast. It doesn't have to be done with a certain art supply. You can do this with dirt for all I care. Have fun. And then you want to share to your teacher. You can share to your grade teacher or you can share with me you can email it to me. I have my email down below and then we'll talk about the prizes. Okay. You have till April 30th. Okay. April 30th is when I will pick the winners. Okay. Does this sound like fun? I'm looking forward to it. I'm anxious to get started on these. Okay. So off you go. Let's get to work. And it's so good to see you all and to talk to you all. You all have a blessed and happy week. Okay. Love you all. Bye.